Hi guys, Julia Usher here. I'm back with another video about my cookie art competition that's ongoing. This video is going to be a little bit different than ones you might have seen in the last week or so insofar as it's designed not to be a Q&A so much, but more of a big warm welcome, a big virtual hug to anyone who's new to the competition. That includes new sponsors like Mark Smith from Custom Cookie Cutters, who's helping me out here today. It includes new entrants, beginners to competition. It also includes new markets that may know nothing about my competition. My competition started back in 2018. It's been online and in person, but the online version is relatively new. This is our third year of running it online, so I'm fully um, aware that many of you in markets outside of the U.S. may know nothing about it. So our goal here today, and Mark's going to help me with this, is really just letting everyone know what, what it is and how it might benefit you as either a cookie artist or a cake artist, because there's really opportunity for everyone to participate. That said, let me uh, introduce Mark. He is a new sponsor, a new gold sponsor, that is, which means that he is one of the companies, his company is one of the companies that has contributed to the highest levels in my cookie art competition. He's very much responsible for helping us to achieve a record-breaking level of prizes this year, which is $25,500 U.S. dollars. Some portion of that is cash. The rest is digital certificates and coupons that can be distributed anywhere in the world. So welcome, Mark. Hi. Um, I believe there's a little bit of a delay. Um, so we will do our best uh, to, to uh, do this um, video. I think it'll be really informative uh, for a lot of the new decorators. And I know in our market in Australia, there's uh, plenty of them. Um, but it'll be interested to see this video and um, to look at entering your competition. So yeah, thanks for having me on this morning. Yeah, and thank you for contributing. I, I would like to say that um, uh, Mark's company, Custom Cookie Cutters, of which he's a uh, founder, and director makes some really cool 3D printed cookie cutters as well as embossing and debossing tools that are oftentimes designed to go with those cutters if I'm right. So if you happen to know yeah. what a debossing tool is and an embossing tool, kudos to you. Not necessarily a requirement for this competition, but it could help you out. Um, <laughs> Mark's also been a huge um, contributor to the Australian market, of course. Um, this year alone at the international um, at the at Akeda, which is the Australian Cake Artists, Cake Decorators, Cake Artists and Decorators Association. I think I got that acronym correct. Um, his company was nominated for not one, but three awards, Best Small Retailer, uh, Best Industry Partner, and also Innovator and Collaborator. So yeah, kudos to you. Yeah. You're also a huge support. Thank you. Su huge support, not just in Australia, but international, internationally in support of competitions like mine, which are global, and also, most recently, American Cake Awards in Miami, if I'm Definitely not mistaken. Can. So That's anyway, right. I've blabbed a lot, um, so I'm going to turn it over to Mark to talk a little bit more about his business and himself, what he's bringing to the competition, and then we're going to come back to addressing everything that anyone new needs to know about the competition. Sure. Thank you, Julia. Um, for those that don't know, uh, Custom Cookie Cutters is based in Australia. Uh, we're almost seven years old. Um, the business started on a kitchen table um, about seven, like I said, seven years ago. Um, my mum and sister started a little cookie business and they were struggling finding their cutters. And it was just a kind of a a passing thought that maybe if they couldn't find their cutters, they could 3D print them. And within a week, I'd uh, own, I bought a 3D printer to help my sister and my mum kind of create their cutters. And after about two or three weeks, I literally wanted to throw the machine away. It wasn't for me. I wasn't from the 3D printing world. It was the hardest thing I'd pretty much ever you know, tried to do. Um, but I was really determined and I think that's shown through seven years of the business to, to keep on innovating and pushing myself to, to learn new skills and um, and here we are today uh, we now have a factory behind me we're stocked in about 80 stores around the world um, we've been 
supplying cutters into the US now for almost six years. So um, some of our earliest um, resellers um, had been the US and Canada, which we're extremely grateful for. Um, so um, we love to support the American Cake Awards, the Australian Awards, um, you know, competitions like yours, Julia, um, that, you know, kind of, it's where we can give back to um, the decorators um, that have supported us for so long. So, yeah, that's a little in introduction of our business. Um, we, although we are based in Australia, we do have sub factories in the US in Tampa, um, as well as the UK. So if anyone was wanting something from our range, whether it be our custom cookie cutter range or one of the collaborations that uh, we work with, with the Little Biscuit, Cake Sarah, Sarah, Bicky Small, Sweet Pea Cutters, um, we, we are the creator, we are the producers of all their products. Um, we can also do custom products and have that product, if you're in the US or the UK, um, the order will still come to us in Australia, but we digitally send your order to the sub factories. They create your create the products there and send it out. So um, for the UK, that's that helps with having no VAT um, mm -hmm. kind of taxes because it's actually being made locally. Um, and then with the and with both the US and the UK, there's no weight times for shipping or international shipping charges so um yeah it's a way that we've been doing that for over five years now and um you know it, it's definitely helped us um get our products out to more people uh you know efficiently well congratulations to you it's a huge success story my goodness um Thank you. okay anything to add um do you want to share what your your prizes are for this particular competition or should we march into the competition itself? Uh, yeah, j jump into the competition. We're obviously gold sponsors. Um, as soon as the opportunity uh, came up to, to sponsor this, I, was, I, I jumped in straight away. If you remember, I think it was a pretty quick reply to, you to your email. And, um, you. <laughs> and uh, I've uh, been seeing you at the uh, SOFO um, and the uh, so far with the American Cake Awards for the last three years and a uh, Carter prior to that. Um, so yeah, it was it was such a great pleasure um, and opportunity to work with you. So yeah, yeah truly um, one of the most gratifying things of being in this business for me is getting to travel and to meet so many talented people like yourself across the world um, and just really finally connecting. Um, with people after seeing them from afar is, is especially, especially nice. So I am so grateful for you joining uh, our competition ranks this year. It's huge. Uh, so I, we actually, as Mark said, we crossed paths at SoFlo not that long ago, a couple of weeks ago. And he pulled it me aside good. and he said, hey, you know, your competition's pretty new to those of us in Australia, I think we need to do some kind of video that really clarifies what it is, the very basics of it, kind of what, what is it, where is it, when does it happen, how does it happen? Because it's something really special and more people need to know about it. So that's what we're gonna do today. I was just gonna start with a what, and if I meander, Mark, just like pull me back in line, oh. redirect me, ask me questions yeah. that I think might be more important to those in Australia. And, it, and we're answering not just for Australians, I should say, though, uh, because honestly, these questions are relevant to anyone, anywhere who hasn't yet participated in my competition. So my competition is global. It's open to anyone, anywhere in the world, as long as you're 13 years of age or older. There will be a link underneath this video to my competition overview. It directs you to my site, Cookie Connection, and it will clarify all of what I'm saying and more in great detail. So I encourage you to read that after we get through this video. So this year, as I said, is the third year it's been online. In the past, it had been in person, meaning people had to physically trundle their cookie entries, you know, onto a table somewhere in the United States. That limited participation, <laughs> it being online, means anyone anywhere can enter. Because what happens is we present a theme for each competition, and we can talk about that later. People create cookie entries or cookie art that relates to that theme and follows some other rules, and then they take pictures of that entry. 
They take pictures of it from various angles. They do a short mini video of it so the judges can see it from all sides. And then those pictures in the video get uploaded to a database on one of my websites that judges then review. So there's no physical entry that gets transported anywhere, which is actually a great stress reliever for <laughs> many of you who know competitions. Just getting the piece on the table can sometimes be challenging. Um, all you're doing is taking photos of your cookie piece that relates to our theme and then uploading it into this database. It's a relatively straightforward process. And I, I do spell it all out in that competition overview. I'm also available at any time to explain steps if they aren't clear, which can sometimes be the case, particularly if people are reading my website in a language other than English, you know, whose native language is something other than English. Um, that said, I will say there is a Google Translate button also on my website, the bottom of the site. So any page can be translated into any language. That should be a great boon as well to people competing from countries that, that are not English speaking. What did I miss that was key there, Mark? Anything? No, I don't know. I think, I think you've got that. So that's what it is. I guess the, the, the question is... Uh, kind of a corollary question of that is like, what, what would be the benefit to me to enter? Um, and particularly if I'm a beginner, what are the benefits of entering? Um, I would say that I really pride myself on the feedback that my competition delivers to entrants. Now this feedback needs to be requested because we spend a lot of time with it. It's written feedback that represents um, the convergence of all the judges thoughts about your piece. It's designed to be super constructive. The intent is to help you grow as a cookie or even a cake artist. So what it looks like is that we have distinct judging criteria. And again, you'll see them in that competition overview. What you'll get is your scores, your numerical scores relative to everybody else in your category. Um, meaning if you're a beginner, you're going to be evaluated against beginners. We don't throw everybody together and expect <laughs> the beginners to fend for themselves. But in addition to the numerical scores, you're going to get a lot of great qualitative feedback um, that's focused first and foremost on what you did well, the kinds of things you want to continue to do as a cookie artist, but also areas where your entry might need improvement. Um, I, I do think, if I can be so immodest, <laughs> that it's the most comprehensive feedback I've ever seen in competition. And that's in part because I write it after the entries are all in, and I write it over the course with my judge's input over the course of one, two, three weeks, depending on how many people request feedback. At an in-person yeah. competition, if you're familiar with that format, there's pressure to get that feedback delivered before the event concludes, which means it's often, though good, there's just less time to do it. So it's often not as thorough. So feedback is the biggest benefit. You know, this yeah. competition is all about learning and growth, helping you expand your skills. Um, the other thing I would that's, add that's is- That's fantastic, that, just for the fact that um people could just enter just simply just for to get some feedback on their work is you know like um the neighbor and um the your husband or a wife or anyone that looks at your work always gives you fantastic feedback and but you know to get that unbiased Correct. feedback from you know the uh, one of the best in the in the world is um wow that's, that's so valuable yeah and it's and it's um and it's a private process too. So it's just between you and, and the judges really. So it's all intended for you. Competition, in fact, I should underscore this, I really see as a personal challenge. It's not really about competing against others. It's about bringing your personal best um, to your entry, trying some new things you might not have tried before. Um, speaking of which, um, yeah. I did get some questions also at SoFlow suggesting that it's a royal icing only competition. Um, there are mediums, many different mediums used on cookies across the world. I know that fondant to some extent is favored in Australia. And um, I wanna say that we embrace all mediums. We actually encourage people, as I said, to try new things, try um, mediums they may be familiar with as well as ones that they're not. Again, it's about advancing your skills. So as you'll see, if you go through the judging criteria, you know, one of the, one of the criteria is, you know, how many different techniques or mediums were tried. Of course, we balance that against how well they use those things together. It's not simply enough to throw a lot at a piece. It has to make sense together and relate. Yeah, yeah. But um, we do encourage mediums of all kinds. So it's, again, really yeah, no fantastic. restrictions other than creating an entry that relates to our theme 
and which meets minimum mm. cookie requirements in each category. Um, and, and what are some um, what are some mediums, for example? So obviously royal icing, fondant, yep. fondant modern, chocolate, ice and all. Correct. All of, yeah, all of the above. <laughs> yeah. Um, I guess something like buttercream, for example, wouldn't be included because it's not something that could stay on a cookie long term. Is that is that yeah. probably a good way of balancing that? Uh, not necessarily. We don't really excuse, exclude any mediums other than something that's inedible. You know, we really. Um, oh, oh. Yeah. So we, you know, if it's edible, it can be on there as far as we're concerned. Um, in the 3D category, we have two categories of competition, 2D cookies, which are flat. And it's a good category for beginners to enter. We also have a 3D category, which is more constructed cookies, you know, little, little mini constructions made out of multiple cookies. In that case, we do yeah. allow inedible supports as long as they're visible, uh, meaning that if somebody were to theoretically eat the piece, they could pull out the support without chomping down on it. But otherwise, anything edible oh. is, is really fair game. Um, I should well, also add, wait, um... Go ahead. Sorry. I keep interrupting. Well, I was going to say that that's fantastic because you know lots of people, including especially cake decorators, that are normally doing their their art onto a cake, can simply just change that medium to a cookie and be doing the same art and, and enter this competition. So yeah, yeah, I would say there are tons of parallels with three D cookies. By that, I just mean constructed, built cookies to cake decorating. I mm. actually started as a cake decorator. Um, and then I moved into more three-dimensional constructed cookies because I think the vantage point, the way of viewing them is very similar. You, you're looking more at a distance in creating the overall design. Yeah. The 2D cookie, a small cookie, you know, you're, most times you're like on top of it, almost with a microscope. So we've got opportunities to compete yeah. in whatever area you're most uh, comfortable with. As I said, we also have a beginner intermediate class and an advanced master class. Um, so the competition is very welcoming to people starting out. And I'd say the beginners are the ones that are going to benefit the most by virtue of that feedback we give. Um, so I really... So does that mean there's like four, there's four categories or is there six categories being 2D, 3D, beginner, so advanced, and then... There are four. I lost your audio. Oh, okay. Uh, there you're back. Okay. Is it back? Yeah, you're back. Right. So you're asking me how many categories? Yeah. Yeah. So there, we have a beginner and intermediate classes, and within each we have 2D and 3D. So there are four total categories or classes. Beginner, 2D, beginner intermediate 2D, advanced master 2D, beginner in intermediate 3D, advanced master 3d so four different sections really and when you register for the competition right. you just have to declare which one you're entering there are definitions of each in that competition overview i mentioned this is probably one of the points that i think hangs people up the most um, is where they fall because oftentimes it's not a black and white kind of thing if that's the case i just encourage you again to email me and i'll help you sort that out one example i gave in the previous video i did and i'll give it again <laughs> is that you know, there was an example of a woman who had one of the one of the requirements for a beginner intermediate is that you haven't placed in another cookie decorating competition. If you've placed and have been awarded a prize, you're in the advanced master category. Um, so this one person had won a cookie. Uh, her booth in a at a particular event had a won an award for being beautifully decorated, and she just wanted to make sure before she registered and entered everything that she was in the right category. So she emailed me, explained the situation. I said, yeah, you're more, you're big, you're a beginner intermediate decorator. Your booth may have won a prize, but your cookie art did it, you know? So that was a pretty easy one to sort out. There are others that are um, more gray, but I'm happy to help people do that. Oh. Oh. Okay. What else did I miss? Um, well, when do, okay. When do people start preparing or when are uh, entries required? Mm -hmm. So we have, actually the, the competition rules have been posted for a while since end of March and read, or maybe even earlier. Uh, and again, they're in that competition overview. It's one post on my site. The link will be underneath this video. And the registration link is also in there. 
Um, registration's also been open since that period of time. So let me clarify what I mean by registering. Registering is simply the act of saying, hey, I'm going to enter. And you have to pay a $15 USD, which is 25 Australian dollars, I believe, registration fee to enter. You know, that fee applies to however many times you enter. Um, that covers the cost of judging, essentially. Though That money goes to my judges to pay them for their time. Uh, developing feedback and spending the time evaluating entries. Do you think, like, you, if there was a normal, call it normal competition, there'd be like a cost of sending your cookies somewhere, or oh, absolutely. Um, yeah. other costs, other costs you would have, which might be a free entry, but then you have to pay for those cookies to go somewhere, or how are you going to get them to a certain event, or or whatnot. So, for yeah. I think it's great value for the fact that yeah. you're not only just saying you're one or you're not. It's it's actually providing that that feedback for your work. Yeah. So there's that registration fee. The other benefit of registering early, so people can register any time from now, from the any time from when they decide they want to enter to the point at which entries are due. The entry needs to be uploaded, meaning the photos and video of it need to be uploaded by June thirtieth. They can register any time in between. The advantage of registering early is that when you register, you'll automatically be sent links to the entry databases where the entries will get uploaded. And they're a very good thing to kind of just go through, to look at. Um, they have all the things that you need to submit, so you'll know exactly what you need to have in front of you when you submit your entry. And it's also just technically speaking, if you're at all like tech unsavvy as I can tend to be, it's nice to be able to navigate a database a few times before you have to upload to it. Um, you will find yeah. if you if you don't want to you know risk spending that fifteen dollars. I understand the economy is kind of tricky right now. Um, you can also find the list of those submission requirements in the competition overview. There are two links at the bottom of the post: one to the two D cookie submission requirements and one to the three D cookie requirements. They're a little bit different, but they list exactly the things you'll need to upload and they correspond exactly to the order that you'll find them in the database. So a couple of ways you can yeah. um, look at that. Yeah, uh, as of today, you know, there's about 50 days uh, to kind of get, in, get on board on this competition. So there's still plenty of time to, to get a, time. a beautiful piece of artwork in. Yes, there's still plenty of time. And I sometimes find that the people that kind of think about it maybe less are less likely to get um, caught up in any kind of pressure or anxiety about it. And, you know, they're just freer to create. So you can really start at any time. Yeah. You know, it's really up to you. Um, oh. Again, I think it's maybe worth touching on the theme before we depart. I know we're kind of up near our time limit. Um, but the cookies do need to yeah. relate to the competition theme. This year is Your Heiress Tour, which is a play on Taylor Swift. We chose that theme because we figured most people across the world will know who she is and that she's going through this major world tour right now. Still doing it. Yeah. Word. yeah. But Just came not... from Australia <laughs> a few months ago. I know. She had a huge crowd there. It's unbelievable. Anyway. We are not asking you to do Taylor Swift or Swifty cookies at all. In fact, we don't allow copyrighted material in the competition. What we're asking you to do is create cookies that express your personal eras or important moments in your life. Um, you can express one moment that was particularly important to you, two, you know, whatever you like, as long as you meet the minimum cookie requirements in either the 2D or 3D category, whichever one you're entering. So the cookies are really designed to be wow. a personal expression of moments in your life. I hope that... I hope that yeah. is extremely is, broad, which is great. I think it allows for a lot of personal expression. And I will say our judges love to see stories in the cookies. You know, part of art, right, is conveying emotion, evoking a reaction in those people who see it. Um, and so, you know, our competition really, really enjoys that storytelling element. So yeah, that, definitely. what else did I, did I miss anything? Well, as I told you, I talk about my competition so much, so it feels like I've said all of this, but again, yeah. <laughs> and I probably have. However, right. maybe I'm not trying to think of if someone was watching this for the first time, what they might have a, a question about. But like, I, I think, I think you you've really covered the majority of the questions I could think of. 
So um, feedback, guess, uh, feedback is huge. You know, that's really the primary benefit of doing it. The prizes are awesome too. And again, you know, I gotta, I've got to thank Mark in large part for making them happen. Again, 25500 in prizes. That's kind of, that's definitely unprecedented unprecedented for our yeah. competition. The US dollar, which is over 40 40,000 Australian for, for my Australian viewers. Mm -hmm. yeah, huge. Mm -hmm. It's huge. And a good chunk of that is cash. And the rest is all certificates that can be redeemed anywhere in the world. So um, again, I just, um, so, you know, if you don't win, you learn. If you do, you, you have the potential for <laughs> some pretty significant upside, which will pay back yeah. that fee in no time flat. So that's fine. So um, I, did we cover like yeah, you, the entry doesn't get shared from yeah. from you. So like it, it is completely it's almost like a private. No one even needs to know that you've entered it, and it's up to each decorator if they wish to share their work on their own socials or so forth. Yeah. So let me let me clarify that a little bit. As the um, entries are being created. Through the time they're judged, we ask that no one share their piece online because we judge blind. We don't even, we don't want our judges to even know who created them. We want them to be as objective as possible and not carry any information they might have about the entrant into their judging process. So we ask they not be shared at all. Yep. Um, and then when we're yeah. done, you know, because That's the entries are uploaded in this database, it's completely private except to the judges who are seeing it who don't even know your name. The only person who will know your name is me because I'm administering the entries. So it's a very private process unless you win, in which case we will shout about you. But um, I think that's good. And I think that's an advantage and a boon to people just starting out because it can be kind of, it can, it's kind of a big step to take to put your artwork out there in front of the whole world. Well, well in fact, in this case, you're really, you're really not unless you happen to win. So, or unless you happen to yeah. share it later. So. Oh, well, that's, that's, that's good. So uh, thank you for asking that. Um, I, I'm out. If you're out, yeah, well, I think I think that's great. I think um, you know, if anyone's watching this um, that has connection through to custom cookie cutters, um, feel free to uh, contact me direct if you've got any questions, and I can always uh, do my best to answer them from what I know. Or if I don't know, I can go to Julia. Or um, you know, I believe there's uh, ways of contacting um, you, Julia, and people can go straight to you as well. Yeah, yeah. Sweetlife at juliausher.com. That's my email, and I'll, I'll probably post it. In fact, uh, underneath this video once it's once it's live. So um, I think that's a wrap. Again, I'm happy to answer questions at any yeah. time. I'm most grateful to Mark for always contributed to the competition, and I'm thrilled to have him as a new sponsor this year and hopefully an ongoing sponsor in years to come. I also um, look forward to seeing everyone's entries, uh, new participants or old participants, the more the merrier. Oh. So until we meet again, Mark, hopefully it won't be too long before I see you in person. Uh, no, I won't be too long. And we'll, we'll be in touch online. No worries. Thank you everyone for listening and uh, good luck with your entries and I hope this has inspired you to um, enter the competition just even just for the fact of getting some feedback on your um, on your decorating skills thank you mark all right thanks everyone bye